Howdy y'all. Thank you for joining us today for this unboxing of a Kickstarter I just got in, Mall Peak. I also got the All In where it came with the original which was Skulk Hollow also so we'll go through that one and open it also. Along with some promos and supposedly a solo adventure that takes place between the two. So I guess let's get into it. And I guess really, let's open them in order. Let's go ahead and start with Skull Hollow. Yes, there's nothing special about this one. It's probably just the retail. Because I don't think it says anything about it being Kickstarter. But it is the first one in the series. So we'll start with it. Skull Hollow. And if you're new, it is a game for... Oh, I was trying to find it. There it is. It is a two-player game. Takes about 40 minutes to play for ages 8 plus. And before you go running away, if you're not into two-player games, this is a two-player also, but if you have both of them, you can mix them so that you could do a three- to four-player game. So, either way, if you're a fan of the... If you've ever played the Shadows of the Colossus video game, that's kind of what this is about. It's about climbing onto these giant monsters and trying to figure out how to take them down. So... We'll check this out. Maybe maybe me avoiding it, and now I might end up liking it. So maybe I should have played it first without judging. Heard good things, though. And I am going to state about this real quick. I noticed a detour from this. Especially since a lot of the Kickstarters I've been getting in have been really, really taking some damage. The mailing on this was amazing. These, these things, both these games were so double wrapped, and even these were like quadruple wrapped and what in bubble wrap. So even the box came in looking pretty beat up, and these look pristine. So I just wanted to point that out that that's been a definitely amazing thing about this so far, at least for that experience. All right, we got the rule book here. Oh man, this is really thick. I was thinking, man, oh, it's just the cover. So the cover's pretty thick. It's got the story there. It's got the objective and components. We get into the game setup. Big words. Looks like it's easy to read through this, find what you're looking for. And then for how to play, we have six pages to learn how to play. Then we get into the hero abilities, guardian characters. And then just details on each uh, monster it looked like. So, pretty cool looking. Just an advertisement for some of Pencil First games. I know, I stopped to do it, but just to show you some of the other games that Pencil First has. That way you can get an idea. Alright. So, here we got, looks like a little map. The lay of the land, probably where you're going to be at. Even has the whole story on it here. I wonder if that's actually for gameplay or if that's just there. Then we have a board, which looks like the other side's going to be the same. Just they go ahead and put the um, lines on it to separate out the squares. And then we have the monsters, which from what I understand, each of them are their own board. Oh, that is, I was just flipping that over and it fell out, but there we go. Which tends to happen with these big pieces of cardboard, but you can see... It's got spots on here. I'm assuming these are the worker placement spots as you're climbing up there. And then just for the artwork on the back. Well, might as well just pop them. Well, this one ain't coming out quite as easy, but eh, let's just go ahead. We got the next monster here. And yeah, I didn't think that was a monster. I thought that might have been a hero, but apparently not. We have a big old cave bear. No, it's a it's a it's a mountain bear. Uh, it's yeah, it's just a mountain shaped like a bear with a big old club. He's gonna hatch it. He's gonna smack people with. And then we have what looks like an eagle mountain. <laughs> All right, and then it's probably just cards that show their things, like. How they activate. Here we got Tanthos. And 
Grack. I think these are your actual heroes. And then a Poda. And this is kind of cool just looking at it, but we got little green hearts here. Probably the damage markers for the monsters. Then we have what looks like bones of some sort, maybe. Some see-through translucent cubes. Now we have red hearts instead of green hearts. But this one I thought looked pretty cool is they got everything inside of their own box. So probably I'd take that out as the Fox and Heroes. Is the characters you're playing. And then depending on the monster you're playing. That's a great, I mean, this just makes me very happy to see this. So let's go ahead and open up a Poda here. And you can see it was like a little tuck box. And then it had his story there on the back, along with, I'm going to take these out just to show them, but there's like four of these in there, and the monster meeple, and then we should have his cards here, which says here, Probably the way you have to defeat him, collect all four rune tokens from the Skull Hollow map. Now nah, it's probably just in order to do stuff with him. Then it's got stuff on the back there. And I'm assuming what these are is how they activate, what they do when it's their turn. Because from what I understand, that's what it's supposed to be is, I guess that's the way it's two player, is two player is one's probably playing the monster and one's playing the Fox and Heroes. And I'll check, those are standard sized, and I'll see, I mean, it's not many cards, so they should be able to go back in here sleeved. And if not, it looks like you can at least put the pieces down in there, and you can probably put the cards there. This may sit a little bit higher, but it looks like they left room to accommodate for that. So we'll go on the Grax box next. I'm not going to really take them out of the bags, but we got Grack there, and it looks like a little, not sure what that is, but a little red mushroom with an X on it, it looks like. And then, we got Grack's card, eliminate eight hero units. Oh, I bet you that's their win condition. So if you're playing two-player, that's how you win as these guys, and then... I can show through these, but they're not really going to make a lot of sense on how they move around. Just going to show each of their win conditions, which I'm curious if it was on the sheet and I just didn't notice it. I think I did see that symbol, so it's very possible. Try not to tear up the tuck box. Yeah, so it had it on the sheets for each of them there, but we're going to continue to open these anyways. We got Tanthos here. And it looks like he's like a vine monster. He's got these several extra little mini vine meeples. And I'm just going to show this. I'm not going to go through the cards. I speed it up a little bit since we got other stuff to go through. It says there have all six foot tokens present on the Skulk Hollow map at the same time. So that's probably those extra six meeples that are in the bag. Those are his feet. You got to get them on the board. It is really pretty cool that you can just sit there. Oh, you want to play Tanthos? Here you go. Here's Tanthos. And then we have Raptra.
which looks like just his monster meeple. Looks like it's all in that bag, along with his cards, and it shows there, eliminate all non-leader hero units from a ground space on the Skulk Hollow map. Oh, there is something else in here. Uh, probably because it's got to sit in there. And they didn't want it to sit in the bag weird. All right, let's get to the Fox and Heroes, which those had some interesting looking cards, but they all look the same to me for the most part. So we'll go through these cards, but you can see the meeples there. Which looks like they each have their own symbols on them. So I'm wondering if that means different symbols, like different classes. Like cleric, fighter type thing. That'd be kind of cool. And like I said, these are standard size if I didn't say it already, but I think so. That it's going to be the standard 63 by 88. And it's got King of War here. The Prince of Guile. Princess of Tactics. Queen of Blessing. Oh, well, now their cards kind of look the same. So these are probably like like they show like melee missile. Then you got knights that'll probably fight for you, rogues. So we're talking about different classes: archer, sentinel, king of war, princess of tactics, prince of guile, queen of blessing. All right, let's get to the next one. So this is what I actually kickstarted. It's Mall Peak, which is the sequel, and it's all the same stuff: two players, forty minutes. Ages 12 plus, and it even says right there that it's compatible with Skull Hollow, cross compatible, and three to four player mode. But other than that, it seems it's the same. So let's see what the differences are. I'm assuming new monsters and probably new classes. We shall see. So same quality rule book as far as thick cover. It's got the story, looks like the map or whatever, probably going up into the ice and lands now. Objective. So it looks like the rule book's all set up exactly the same. I'm sure explaining the new stuff here. And then they got the monsters with a deeper explanation on each. Nice setup, I actually like that. And I'm very impressed with these inserts. I'm very impressed with everything I've seen with this game so far. And they show here combining the games and how to do it. There's a little thing here. And it lets you know how you would combine them. Then that, we saw this with the last one. It's just the map for the new lands. With the story of those lands. So I'm wondering. I guess I should have kept the other one out. I'm sure they don't connect in really. But could that be we're going to see some future stuff. For the other lands. And then we have. A new monster here. Big old ice spider. Looks like we got like a hydra. Would you say a giant lizard, but it's got multiple heads. Oh, oh, this one ain't wanting to come apart. There we go. And it looks like a, maybe a frost giant with their three-headed dog, like a Cerberus. And then we have their cards here, and yep, it has them there, Saboso. We'll go to their winning conditions when we open up each of the boxes. Quagra. 
Veblen or Veblen Trovac and Narl and then we have the Grizzar instead of green and red hearts we have blue and red hearts this time along with the translucent orange cubes more bones I'm not sure about the bones all right let's just get through these boxes quickly and get to the cards so we got some five snowflakes here along with the meeple oh they didn't bag them the same way so i am going to have to open them up since i just zoomed through them but you can see their cards are all the same with their abilities and it says here have four hero units trapped in the cell location which i did notice it looked like he had like a cell or something inside of his belly and i don't remember if i showed the back of this so i will and i'll show him the picture where we saw the cell but it's got his story there on the back and then yeah it looked like he had something like here in his belly all right we got quagra here the corrupting guardian so quagra the corrupting guardian and it's just the big old meeple oh he's got Two packs of cards here. All right. Oh, it says Corrupting Guardian, so maybe he takes over the townsfolk. Because we got here, Deplete the Entire Confusion deck. Oh, that's probably the other deck. And then he had a second deck. Would show Foxen. Oh, I guess that way if you're mixing it with the other one. It's got the Foxen Confusion deck. Looks like they're all the same. Just got several here. And then we have the Grizzar Confusion deck. Which looks all the same also. So I guess once it confuses enough of the people playing... Is how it wins. We have Trovac and Gnarl here. I'll admit, out of the ones I've opened today, this is the one I'm most excited about playing now. Which is funny since I was like, oh, I didn't really want to play it. Now I saw the Kickstarter. And now I'm kind of thinking I'm going to throw this on the table Thursday and see what's up. Okay, they have rules cards here. I don't know if they're different, so I'll just look the same to me, but that's just quick looking. Then it just has their cards along with their win. Fill the power track with eight spent power cubes. And I'm not really showing also, it also has all the rules on the back and on their card. I think that is very cool like that they did that we got Veblen or Ve Veblen with a bag of spider webs and then it's giant meeple then we got its cards along with its main card. Have three hero units in the layer space. So you're probably gonna have the web units, trap them, and then drag them back to your layer. All right, we have the Grizzar, which are the people of the lands. I think it said the lowlands. Oh, this one. I was about to say, I didn't see any meeples in this one. I was about to say, uh, this one don't have meeples. This one has a bunch of meeples and it looks like a little 
Maybe a pet of some sort. And then it had some translucent red cubes inside of there. Sorry, this is taking a little bit. All the ones inside these boxes were inside like a little baggie. And then for some reason when it gets to these, maybe because there's more of them, they, um, they have them. Um, sorry, I just noticed all these different ones. But they have them in uh, sealed plastic. So we got the cards here. We got White Mouse with all of his stuff. I'm not going to show each of those. We got Stalk, Snow Hare, Northern Goat, Glacier Owl, Frost Lynx, and then the Grizzar. And I'm assuming these are the characters from Grizzar, the Sage, the Herbalist, Barbarian, Assassin, Mage, and a Druid. Then we have a deck that's called Winter Beast, and it has those cards we saw. So that's probably that pet we were seeing. And then we have the actual Grizzar themselves, which are their cards. Oh, we didn't see characters this time. Like the last one we saw, the king of this and queen of that, whereas this one, I guess there's also more classes, though. I think we saw more class cards, I guess. And then we got the pets. So the pets probably make for themselves. Hence it said lowland, so there's no royalty. All right, let's get to the other cards. All right, so we got these promo packs, I think. They're called Ancient Relics. And they have one for Skulk Hollow and Mall Peak. So, maybe it's like artifacts and stuff you can get. Oh, I thought that would have the rules of it on there. I guess that's right here. It lets you know it's a mini expansion. And this is probably how you get them. And then there was these cards. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. This is showing farm, forest shrine, forest swamp, mine, town mill, town well. Sounds like to me, basically, these locations will be on the map. And you're basically going to try to pick up these ancient relics off of the map to take extra turns. So that's probably, this is going to be probably the same thing that was in that just with the locations from the ice instead, or from the snow map. Yeah, Guardians of the Relic Cave. Heroes Relic Cave Cache. And then yeah, it's the locations, there's nine of these. So, or eight. I guess one that can't be. It makes sense. It's your spot. But I'm going to put these back in the baggies. And I'll put them each in their individual game. And then we'll take a look at that. Runes and Ruins. Which says it's a single player adventure set between Skull Hollow and Mall Peak. So it's solo player, 15 minutes, ages 12 plus. All right, so what was in there? Sorry, I did that off camera, but we got some wooden punch outs here. It says set aside, may or may not be used. This is not a tool. So it's got four tools and it's saying that may or may not be used. Then there's just a white card here. Then we have one card that shows this. Then it shows multiplayer rules, even though it said solo. Oh, that's scratch off stuff. So this might be a one time play. Huh. All right, hold on, hold on. I just realized, sorry, I was showing you the last card last. So this is a, um, it's got them numbered here in the top. So it shows you here how you're going to go through the adventure. 
And then initial setup, your journey begins. So it looks like you're gonna read through these cards. This looks like a, and there's gonna be scratching off. Um, so this is like legacy, I'm thinking. Yep, you name your guy there. Huh. I mean, I can show all these. It ain't like I'm spoiling anything, but just to kind of show you, yeah, it's a little mini adventure you're going to go through. And reveal stuff, I'm assuming, depending on what tools you have or checks you make. Hmm. My question is, can it be played multiple times? I guess we'll find out. And I'll look at that. But yeah, I'm not going to go through every single one of these. because. But yeah, it looks like a little legacy-esque story. Well, I kind of read the rules quickly here. I mean, I just kind of skimmed through them, really. Um, I can't tell if it's just a one-time play or not, but... It is interesting. I am more interested in playing it now, for sure. Um, it would be disappointing if it is just a solo or a, a one-time play only. But I mean, the scratch also definitely be a one-time only because once you scratch it off, but maybe it's something that every time you go through there. I don't know. Kind of cool, though. But, cool. Well, thank you for watching, and have a great day.